this brain bit by bit I will not go into the congenital toxoplasmosis infection that can happen when pregnant women eat raw meat or change the cat's litter box but I will show images of toxoplasmosis as an opportunistic infection in patients with HIV and toxoplasmosis is very common and a large part of the population has this parasite as a latent infection and once immunocompromised this parasite becomes reactivated leading to multiple target lesions in the brain at the corticomedullary junction, the basal ganglia, the thalamus and the cerebellum. The target lesions are T2 hypointense with a rim of edema and the edema seems disproportional to the size of the inner circle. On post contrast images there's rim enhancement with an eccentral nodule that also enhances. And there are different forms of the parasite. There's the tachyzoid form when it's free and then it can replicate quickly, hence the name tachy, quick. And the tachyzoid form are the active parasites and they correspond to the enhancing rim that you see. The center consists of necrosis, so dead organisms, and the body cannot form a capsule around the parasite, but it can only encyst it. So um, the encysted parasites are called the bradyzoid form, and this corresponds to the rim of edema. Patients with HRV are not only prone to toxoplasmosis but also have a higher risk of lymphoma so it might be difficult to distinguish between a lymphoma with rim enhancement and a toxoplasmosis in the brain. If it's a single lesion it's more likely to be lymphoma and you can also use diffusion weighted images because there is increased diffusion in the center of the toxoplasma lesion because it's not as thick as a pyogenic abscess but it's very watery. Another differential diagnosis to think of when you have rim enhancing lesions in patients with HIV are other opportunistic brain infections and we're gonna look at cryptococcus in the next vlog. Thanks!